Yo guys, this is Beant, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make your drops hit a thousand times harder. I'm gonna go through some simple and not so simple tips and tricks that you can incorporate into your production in order to make your drops stand out and also in order to make them sound a lot cleaner. Before starting with your video though, don't forget to do all that good stuff to support this free content. Like this video, subscribe to the channel and comment down below if you got any suggestion for future videos. But now, without any further talking, let's get straight into the video. First of all guys, before showing you any of these tips, I'm just gonna show you what we're starting from. So for a lot of people that transition could sound very good and also in my opinion it's not too bad but still we can make it sound even better and more effective with some very simple tricks so let's see what we can do. So first of all guys in order to make your transition sound very effective you have to take care of energy. In particular you have to make sure that the build up is creating enough anticipation for the job yet at the same time it needs to have less energy than the job. That's something that we can simply solve by using some automation. Let's see what we can do. So the first thing that I usually like to automate is just a simple fade to grey effect. In my case I'm just using the classic endless smile but you can use whatever effects that does this job. So what I'm doing is just simply automating it so that it grows throughout the build up until it gets to the point of the pre-drop where in this case I made the effects go quite crazy so yeah let's see how this sounds. Yeah, it sounds quite crazy, but in my opinion, in this case, it works very well. If you don't need any crazy effects like the one I just did, you could simply go for a much easier type of automations, which still could do the job. But in my opinion, the other one in this case is working even better. So after the fade to grey effects, I usually like to use just a simple high pass on my master channel, which a lot of times you might find included with your fade to grey plugin, but yeah, in this case I just prefer automating it separately. So yeah, let's see how it sounds like. As you can see, it's just helping a lot getting rid of that sub and bass heaviness and energy of the build up in order to make the bass of the drop sound even heavier than what it actually is. So the third thing which I'm usually automating in my buildups is the stereo separation. In FL Studio it's very simple to do that because you have this knob but in other DAW you might have to pull up some kind of utility plugins to make this automation but yeah it's very simple. Everything we're doing is just restricting the stereo fields so that when the drop hits it seems like the track gets super wide but in reality it's just wide as it was before. So yeah let's see how it sounds like. Also when it comes to these effects you might have noticed that I really like to go kind of crazy with this in some of my productions and yeah that's something I really encourage just try to have fun with it because it can really get quite creative and yeah let's see how it sounds with a different layout. So the fourth and final effects which I usually like to automate in my transition is just simple volume. But this I would say is probably the most relevant effects that you have to automate in your buildups. So the first way you could automate these effects is just simply by lowering the volume before the drop hits so that when the drop hits it will sound louder which will technically make it better. So let's see how this sounds. It already sounds quite nice but we can also get some more creative by doing some stuff like this which is really one of those secrets which make your drop hit very 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 hard. As you've heard some simple silence can add so much energy to your drops and that's why I really encourage you to automate your volume in the same way before your drops so you can get effects like that. 
Also, in most of the cases, I would recommend you not to kill completely the volume because anyway, that might sound a bit weird. So yeah, do something like this. Alright guys, so for the final step, I decided to switch to another project as I thought it was more fitting to the advice I wanted to give you. So simply, that is just about making your job impact in a clean way, yet retaining that energy. And that is something which I only lately have been discovering and doing, which is simply just about cutting all of your samples, which are not impacts, kicks or main element of your track right when the drop it's in this way the only elements which will play right when the drop impacts are those elements which really need to be playing when the drop impacts and not all of the loops all of the ambient samples and all of the stuff like that which you don't really need in that first bit so let's see how it sounds with and without this change <music> Alright guys, so now we're finally done also with this video. Keep in mind that these tips might not work for all of your project and for all of the situations because in some cases you might not even need that big energy change. And always keep in mind that the very first rule in order to make your transition sound effective is contrast, as Jay Esker once explained. Big shout out to him for having teached me that lesson. With that said guys, don't forget that this Friday my new single Need You together with Suicide is finally being released, so please go stream it, that would mean a lot to me, and yeah, see you with the next one, peace.